What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be talking about Palantir and they announced their earnings on Monday, May 8th after hours. So what we are going to do in this video is we are going to take a look at what analysts are expecting to be announced on Monday. Then we're going to go over what that would mean for Palantir's growth year over year and how it's looking moving forward for the company. And then I'm going to give my opinion on what could be detrimental to the stock if they were to announce a miss in a certain category. So we're going to go over all of that in this video here today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. Before we get into all of that, let's take a look at Palantir's chart. Here they basically traded sideways today around 0.41%. And that is kind of crazy when we have actually seen the market trade up around 2% here today. So Palantir has basically stayed level while the market is actually trading higher. Over the last five days, we can see that Palantir has traded down over 4% and over the last month down another 8%. If we look Look at year to date, however, the stock is up almost 16%. Let's start off by taking a look at what analysts are expecting for EPS. Here we can see that there are 14 analysts covering the stock on Yahoo Finance. They have an average estimate of four cents of positive EPS, a low estimate of three cents, and a high estimate of five cents. And it is great to see analysts expecting Palantir to continue the run of profitability, and they expect that run to continue throughout the entire year as they have an average estimate for earnings this year of 20 cents per share, a low estimate of 16 cents per share, and a high estimate of 24 cents per share. Overall, we're talking about a very tight range as the low estimate compared to the high estimate is only an eight cents difference. However, it's great to see that whether the analyst is bullish or bearish on Palantir, that they are still projecting that Palantir will be profitable for 2023. When it comes to stocks that are just hitting profitability, one thing that investors are paying very close attention to is revenue. So for revenue estimates for the current quarter, they're expecting Palantir to be somewhere between $504 million to $507 million with an average estimate of $505.6 million. This is only a 13.3% growth year over year. And for the entire year, analysts have an average revenue estimate of $2.2 billion, a low estimate of $2.17 billion, and a high estimate of $2.24 billion. And that represents a 15.6% growth year over year. And here we have graphic Palantir's EPS over the last couple of years. We could see that it's basically been level on a quarterly basis over the last couple of years. And finally, last quarter, they got to profitability with a two cents profit. And we could see that in the total for the year, they were still down around 18 cents. And this next year, analysts are projecting that basically that will flip to around 18 cents in profit. Revenue is where things get a little bit more interesting for Palantir because we could see that this is a very nice chart. We could see revenue over the trailing 12 months has continued to increase every quarter and we could see a similar trend for revenue quarter by quarter again a very solid increase over time however this last chart is the part that is a little bit concerning we can see how revenue has changed year over year back in june of 2021 they were experiencing around 50 percent revenue growth and we see it slowly decline into the 30 percent and then down to the 20 percent and now we've started to see it even drop below 20 percent to the upper teens. Now what we are projecting year over year is somewhere around 13 percent growth and that is not going to be ideal for a stock like Palantir. We want to see that number start getting back up to around 25 to 30 percent. That would be a very solid growth rate for Palantir. And Palantir can start getting back to higher revenue growth by really targeting the public sector and really working to expand contracts and deals with companies that can utilize their software. We've seen that over the last quarter as they've targeted Microsoft to expand their cloud partnership to the public sector. So this is great news to see and is good overall as Palantir so far has really only targeted a lot of government contracts and that will only get them so far. There's a lot more revenue to be had by exploring a lot more public companies and getting public companies interested in the software that they offer. However, deals like this take a while to really start affecting the top and bottom line numbers. In the short term, Palantir has decided to lay off some of their workforce they're expecting to reduce their workforce by around 2% in efforts to really reduce costs and help project and get closer to EPS. And this is something, again, that in the short term will have a good effect on the profitability of the business. However, they still need to really ramp up some of these deals to help increase those top and bottom line numbers. So personally, what am I looking for when I'm watching Palantir's earnings announcement on Monday? It's these couple things that we have highlighted here. So Palantir, over the last two years, has beaten EPS 50% 
100% of the time and has beaten revenue estimates 100% of the time. We've also seen EPS estimates over the last three months see four upward revisions and three downward revisions. Revenue estimates have seen one upward revision and seven downward revisions. What this really tells us is what analysts and investors are expecting from Palantir's earnings call. So in terms of EPS, there's really a 50-50 shot. People aren't really sure what to expect, whether Palantir is going to stay profitable or whether maybe they'll incur a small loss. If we see something in a reasonable range, I don't think Palantir's stock price will really react uh, in a significant way. I think when it comes to revenue, there's a clear statement that analysts are having. So there are seven downward projections and one upward revision. So what that means is that analysts right now are really expecting Palantir to come in and have a very tough quarter when it comes to revenue. So what we want to see is Palantir at the very least meet expectations. If they come in and have a large miss to the downside, I think we could see the stock move down in a very significant way. However, on the reverse, if we see them come in with a very strong beat, then we could see the opposite happen as well. We could see Palantir come out and the stock price move in a very significant way to the upside. One benefit of having so many government contracts is that people really know what to expect when it comes to revenue in EPS. And I think that is going to continue at least for the next couple of quarters with Palantir. I think as they start building out some of these deals with public sector companies, that is when there is going to be more volatility in the stock price as well as their revenue and EPS numbers. However, that is where Palantir wants to go into the future because when they can start getting those larger jumps in revenue numbers year over year, quarter over quarter, that's when the stock is going to react in a positive way. And then if they can flip those contracts also and generate a higher and more profit from them, that is also going to be a big benefit. So personally, I think this quarter, this announcement, and then also probably next announcement, we're not going to see a whole lot of excitement. I think over the next year to three years, they really need to start building out that public sector revenue stream. And once they start getting that built out, I think there's a lot more potential upside with Palantir. So keep in mind, I am a shareholder of Palantir. I do like it for the long term. I think they have potential moving forward to really grow the revenue and grow their EPS numbers. So do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure the company meets your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. And if you like the company, then obviously invest in it. But again, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. So with all of that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.